Victor Danger, Charles Working Man in Comics here with a special little midday live uh, on a Friday. How crazy is this? Uh, a little quick episode of Black, White, and Red All Over. Um, we did shoot a, an episode last night, but it was really kind of something different where we were doing super spoilers for Mark Miller's recent release, Magic Order Volume 3, Number 6. But we want to showcase that we still have some of the classic Black, white, and red all over stuff jumping off. So I'm jumping in. Uh, again, I'm still in my hotel. I'm down in New Orleans here for Fan Expo uh, New Orleans. So if you are in town, definitely come through and check out all the cool stuff that I'm doing. I have a brilliant schedule. It's amazing. But I still read, reviewed, uh, and I'm recommending some books for you. So let's go through the list here. Um, instead of my typical setup here, because uh, the sixth book we don't actually have here, um, I do kind of want to just pick books at random that I read, and they are kind of great. So... From AWA, uh, we've got Daniel Cross, Lacey, and Marco Lesko. This is Trojan, issue one of four. Um, this is this is crazy dope. Okay, so you're you're mixing uh, ideas of fantasy, fae fantasy with the dark web, and seeing how you know some of this stuff bleeds in together um, for the ne'er do wells that you know live on the dark web, and this fascination with the magical beings that that actually reside in our world and not all of them are appreciated and therefore there's there's this whole subclass of people and how that actually runs this is this is interesting a little dark a little a little dark um definitely something i think would have been on ryan's reading list um i think he would have read it and be like oh my god i love this um especially considering some of the things that they get into uh from the dark web uh if you were reading um what is it red room and thought that that was a little too extreme and you want something a little lighter, this might be the, the go-to for you. So check out Trojan. I think this one was a really good one. Um, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the read on this one. Um, okay, so this next one, I had to get. Like, without question, I had to. And I was hoping, fingers crossed, hoping that I was going to run into the uh, one of the creators for this at the show here in New Orleans. He's a Louisiana local. Not in New Orleans, but Louisiana local. My guy, your guy, the guy, Rob Delory. Um, I picked up Mosley. Um, okay, so again, this is Rob Delory, uh, Sam Lofty, uh, Jean-Francois uh, Boulay, uh, or Bolu, Bolu, I think that's how you say that. Um, okay, so issue one, and he's been promoting this heavy. Like this is this is a big project for, for Rob and super excited to check it out. Uh, number one, it's beautiful, right? And you have to take note of such a thing because Rob himself is a brilliant, you know, artist with Chew and so many different things that he did, a farmhand. Um, so when somebody else jumps in, Sam, you did a great job, jumps in on the art duties, like there's got to be something where you're like, I don't know if I want to do this. But Sam knocked this out. Okay, so in terms of what this is, again, another genre building cross pollination of stuff. We've got this evolution of AI and robots in the world. And it takes a turn and then a mythical vein jumps off and it's kind of crazy because like it, it was wholly unexpected that that's where that was going to go but the the building of it this idea of tech versus mythology is kind of fascinating um i think it's something that right now as people are talking about ai and all these different things it's a it's a hefty conversation and i think rob is tapping into the zeitgeist um, and telling a fun, crazy story about it. I'm not gonna lie though, this future space that he's built, I kinda wanna go, I kinda wanna go, okay? I'm not saying like all the things are the things that I want there, but I kinda wanna go, okay? So definitely check out Mosley. It's it's a really good one. Um, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, okay, so obviously I've been keeping up on the Avengers Assemble, Avengers Forever storyline, um, and I keep that going with Avengers Assemble Part Four, um, we got Jason Aaron, um, wait, let's see, let me try to get everybody right. Jason Aaron, Javier Garon, um, let's see, we've got David Curiel on colors, uh, VCs, Corey Petit on letters. Um, this gets wild. Okay, so this is in the throes of battle, and this is kind of something that's interesting. Okay, so there's a couple of, of books that, not that long ago, um, even like Dark Crisis, when the fighting happened, there were moments that were supposed to be big impact moments and things happened, but it wasn't quite the same. And I think this actually takes the time to allow those fights to play out. Like we're actually seeing, um, you know, the buildup of a situation, the resolution of a situation take place over pages, let alone like panels, but like pages. And there's something really powerful to that. I think there's something really cool 
when you um, actually allow character interactions to really build up and hit their their crescendo um, as opposed to trying to like knock it out really quickly and be like oh isn't that fast and it was it was cool no nah, that's not the way that's not the way this does it so wonderfully and the end result um, we're about to see a fight like none other um, breakdown like this is gonna be nutty and of course if there's any if there's one Marvel Comics four-letter word that I can say that will get you excited it's got to be doom and doom is doom will doom has and I can't wait to see what doom does because this is gonna be amazing so definitely check this out this was a great read good times um okay this one definitely a Ryan book children of the black Sun um, the cover is Stranger Things-esque. I mean, you look at this and you go, yeah, that's exactly what this is. And it, it's, it's absolutely right. This is from A Blaze. Um, this is the first issue. And creative team is Dario Ciccio, Ciccio um, La, Letizia Cadenici, and Francesco Sagala. So obviously, I think this is an, an Italian-based um, art team. I don't know. Let's see. Where is this published? Do, 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 do. They're listed as, as, as Portland, Portland, Oregon. So... Maybe that's, they, they just happen to all be of, uh, they might all be Italian creatives. Cause I mean, looking at the cover artists and everything definitely seems as though they are all um, Italian. And so there's a vibe here. It's a very European comic style. Um, the art is a little loose, but still like very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. There's a, there's a, like it's not cartooned. I think that's an inappropriate way of look at it, looking at it. I think this is a very, this is a very mainstream version of an alt comic, right? So it could be kind of underground, not your traditional piece, but there are these kids that were born during this crazy phenomenon, this cosmic phenomenon where the sky, no, I'm sorry, the sun comes out as black and the world reacts in a crazy way when this happens. And it's happened twice. And there are kids that were born um, with a, a visual condition and possibly a mental disposition because of it and them trying to find their place in the world and how it how others react to them um, is the whole crux of this one and it's deep children of the black sun is definitely something that's highly noteworthy um i'm calling like movie or a tv show like it's happening it's got to happen because this is one of those stories that just kind of built perfectly um you know the only crazy visuals that you're gonna have to look at are you know when the black sun occurrences happen and i'm sure we can we can figure out how to visually bring that to life this is this is dope um but yeah like seeing all the people uh the survivors of the situation and their reaction to the people that that underwent this it's kind of amazing it's kind of amazing um okay so last on my list here and this one whoo reveals reveals um chances are you already have seen on cbr and other news sites uh some of the things that have been revealed here Big stuff, uh, big changes. Dark Knights of Steel, nine of 12, we're almost done. Um, we have the original team is back. So Tom Taylor, Yasmin Putri, um, Eric Priato, uh, doing their thing. Uh, what can I tell you? I mean, last issue we saw um, Lara L kill Hippolyta um, in a brutal, brutal way. We get more reveals than anyone is prepared for. There are there's been a hidden player this entire time. Someone on the scenes that we didn't know, we did not know exactly what happened. I don't know how long they've been there, um, but they are, their machinations are lengthy and great and raw. And ooh, when, when, you, when you see what happens, um, it'll, it'll, it'll blow your mind. And then when you get the second major reveal in this one there's two two huge reveals um it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna blow your mind tom taylor definitely one of the best writers in the game right now if not ever um is is pulling out all the stuff I mean, all the shocks the twists all of it is amazing yasmin is doing the damn thing um just a beautiful looking book just you feel the emotion you feel the energy the action everything this is highly recommended and again the the book is almost over I mean, we've got three issues left and I cannot wait. When this is out in trade, oh, that's gonna be a beautiful hardcover on my shelf. Oh, I cannot wait. Oh, it's gonna be so good. So 
five books for you to rec or that I'm recommending to you that you read, grab from the shop this weekend. You definitely want to do so. Um, they were fantastic reads, and we will hopefully be back full on sprint next week, ready to record as usual from the show or from the store, um, and we'll, we'll figure out how to make it work. But that's my quick review for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.